The back rooms. You've been here before. Object number 75, Chekhov's gun. Object 75, or Chekhov's gun, is a miraculous gun that shows up when someone needs it most. Description. Chekhov's gun takes the appearance of a standard Mosin Nagat rifle. Footnote. Officially known as the three-line rifle M1891. End footnote. The gun is notably pristine, with no scuffs, scratches, or rust found anywhere on it. The most distinctive feature of this weapon is a metal plate on the butt of the gun that has a curious engraving that reads, A Gift from Anton, 15 July, 1904. Image Caption An example of a typical Mosin Nagat rifle, not an actual picture of Chekhov's gun. Properties Chekhov's gun only seems to appear when somewhat arbitrary conditions are met but when it does, it can prove invaluable. Chekhov's gun seems to only manifest when a wanderer is threatened by an aggressor that will bring them harm, such as an entity or hostile human. Usually, the wanderer that is being threatened will see it at the last second, having only a short window to grab it and defend themselves. On rare occasions, wanderers who are fleeing a threat may find it and wait until their aggressor is within their sights. Regardless of how it manifests, Chekhov's gun seems to be a rare occurrence, and those who have seen it owe their life to it. A strange similarity has been found in the reports of every person that has found Chekhov's gun. Every report indicates that the person who found the gun either feels that the gun is familiar, or that they had actually seen the gun in the front rooms. The facet of the object has raised many questions about its connection to the front rooms, the back rooms, and the wanderers who see it. It has been theorized that this gun is a mere manifestation within the front rooms due to witnesses indicating that no other person perceived the gun. It is likely that seeing the gun foreshadows one's entrance into the back rooms, and the gun's use within the back rooms. However, why the gun manifests and who manifests it seems arbitrary. Chekhov's gun is not a conventional firearm. It has been reported that no ammunition or further operation is required to fire the gun. Furthermore, it has been noted that when fired, there is no felt recoil, and no sound or muzzle flash is produced. But, most curiously, when the gun is fired at a target, the target will disappear without a trace. In addition to the target, Chekhov's gun will disappear from the user's hands. The inner workings of Chekhov's gun are unknown due to the short span of time that one usually has the weapon. Nevertheless, it would appear that the weapon compensates for a user's aim, as reports from people with no firearm experience indicate that they nailed their target despite their shaky aim. All of these aspects make Chekhov's gun a boon that should be used as soon as the opportunity arises. It may save a life. Locations Chekhov's gun can theoretically be found on any level, though it is usually found on more dangerous levels as the conditions to obtain it are tied to a user's safety. Discovery The first known sighting of Chekhov's gun was made by a 16-year-old boy named Adrian Hardsty, who had no clipped into level 2, he used Chekhov's gun to defend himself from a skin stealer. The following interview was conducted with this individual after the fact. Begin log. Time. 3.46 p.m. Date. December 10th, 2022. Location. Level 1. Base Alpha. Interviewer. Greg Stone. Interviewee. Adrian Hardsty. Adrian sits opposite of Greg, looking uncomfortable with the interview. Greg seems to be unfazed by his seemingly uncomfortable state. Greg. Hello, it was Adrian Hardsty, correct? Adrian. Yeah. Greg. Alright, I just want to ask you a few questions about this strange gun you found in level 2. Adrian. Sure, make it quick. I don't really like answering a bunch of questions. Greg. Great. First, what was happening when you found this gun? Adrian. I was in that horrible place with the pipes when I saw a, I don't know, a monster or something. 
It looked human at first, but I could tell it wasn't. I ran away, but I could hear it getting closer. As it got closer to where I was, I saw a gun just laying on the floor. I thought it was my only option, even though I had never fired a gun before. My hands were shaking with fear, and as the monster came into my sight, I pulled the trigger and the monster and the gun were both gone. I'm not even sure I hit it, and don't guns usually make a really loud noise? I didn't hear a thing when I pulled the trigger. Greg. Very interesting. Indeed, you should have heard the gun going off. Lucky you that it did not make a sound. It likely would have attracted more entities, or even damaged your ears in such a confined space like level 2. Adrian. Huh, I guess I am lucky then. Adrian seems to contemplate for a second as Greg writes in a journal. Greg. Okay, can you tell me what this gun looked like? Do you know what kind of gun it is? Adrian. I don't know anything about guns. Why are you asking me? Greg. I understand, but any information could be helpful. Adrian. I guess it had wood on it? It looked old for sure, but it was clean. I don't really know what else to say about it. I'm sorry if that's not very helpful. But thinking about it, I swear I've seen it before. Wait, I remember. I was with my dad. He was doing something in a pawn shop. I'm not sure what. Anyway, when I looked around at the stuff in the shop, I saw a gun on display. I tried to point it out to my dad, but he ignored me while talking to the person behind the counter. I think it was the very same one I saw in, uh, level two. Greg. Huh. Interesting. You say you saw this gun within the front rooms? That is quite a revelation. I will make sure this info reaches my superiors. This could be a breakthrough discovery. Adrian. The front rooms? You mean Earth, right? Whatever. Is that all? Greg. I think that is all we need for now. Thank you for your cooperation. Greg opens the door for Adrian and both leave the interview room. End log.